Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me for Singapore Fintech Festival coverage is Rahan Ahmad, Head of Fixed Income Products and Digital Assets for FIC with the Singapore Exchange to discuss digital bond issuances. Rahan, it's great to meet you virtually. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thank you for the invite. Greetings from SGX in Singapore. All right, you got it. And we see that Asian corporates and governments have tapped international bond markets at a record pace this year. Could you tell us more about the growth of Asian bond sales and perhaps how digital technologies could accelerate its growth? Yes, I think the word record is, uh, is certainly correct. When you look at Asia bond markets like Japan, the total outstanding is approximately 35 trillion uh, USD equivalent. And this year we have seen year to date, and we're speaking at the beginning of December, approximately 380 billion of issuance. This is already 10% over last year's issuance numbers. So uh, the market is certainly large. I think uh, both long-term and short-term debt are being issued at a record pace this year. I think the macro environment and the rate environment is certainly helpful. And where we step in with the digital bonds technology is really trying to look at what is the right infrastructure to support the size of this bond market, the issuance of this bond market, and somewhat really the complexity of this bond market. How can we make it more efficient for issuers, arranger banks, investors, paying agents and legal counsel? So when we think about the digital technologies like blockchain, it seems like it's no longer just a fad anymore, but a growing trend. Could you help us understand what the differences are in many of the different terms and technologies we've been seeing, such as distributed ledger technology or smart contracts? Sure. So let's pick on two of those because there are several areas of technology under you know, what is commonly known as blockchain. So I'll pick on two, which are smart contracts and distributed ledgers. Uh, simplistically, a smart contract is a self-executing contract. So you can program a logic on top of it. If certain, uh, if certain conditions are met, the contract simply executes itself. So the question here really is, how is that relevant to bond markets? A typical bond issuance, and we've looked at some studies around this, has more than 650 individual steps to be completed for the issuance. So the question we sought out to answer was really, if you have smart contract and distributed ledger technology, uh, how many of those steps can actually be automated? And we found quite a few processes that the point of issuance could be automated, but more importantly, over the life cycle of the bond itself can also be automated. And the second more frequently uh, known one is uh, distributed ledgers and blockchains. So very simplistically, a blockchain is a digital record of a transaction. And I think they, they would occur in two states. One would actually be a permissioned ledger in which a trusted source actually runs that. And the second one would be a decentralized or permissionless ledger in which many different participants are required to verify a record on there. Uh, when you look at uh, regulated, uh, when you look at highly regulated traditional vanilla products such as bonds, uh, really we found there was less need for permissionless structures. So essentially it's not decentralized finance. Uh, as we know it, uh, you know, generally the investors, the arrangers, the banks will usually trust a securities depository such as ourselves. So interestingly, we actually focused on the smart contract piece and the automation of what the security does versus focusing on consensus mechanisms through a decentralized blockchain uh, for our pilot deal. What are some of the strengths that SGX has in this space? Tell us more about SGX's digital asset products and services and what do you hope to achieve? Absolutely. So SGX is quite unique in the sense that within a bond infrastructure, we actually play, play two different roles. Uh, the first one is that of a bond listing venue. And over here, uh, for example, we have bonds in more than 20 currencies. We have uh, 1,500 plus issuers, more than 2 trillion in uh, bonds listed on our, on, our, uh, on our exchange. But also we are a regional central securities depository or a CSD. So it was a very unique uh, application of the technology because we were able to look at how a better data communication channel can allow all of the participants in the market to be able to send bonds for listing, for example, to be able to send bonds for custody, security applications. And our pilot was really revolved around that. So really what happens, what we call post-trade. Uh, it is a project that we ran with uh, two of our partners. One was HSBC who are playing the role of an arranger bank and a custodian bank, along with Tomasic Holdings, which is a state bank investment company uh, with a very deep interest in distributed ledger technologies. 
So what we actually found was that in terms of host trade automation, there's certainly a lot to do. But interestingly, we find other data gaps and other latency gaps upstream. So essentially, the question is, what happens at the point of issuance that technology that we have at our disposal can help alleviate? So in terms of next steps, uh, having gone through, um, you know, we had our first pilot deal on our digital asset issuance platform in August of this year. We have done four deals to date. And I'd say in terms of next steps, we'd be focusing on upstream efficiencies, which is how do you build a platform and an ecosystem that takes in the more than 2000 plus international investors who participate in the Asia bond markets that take in more than the 40 legal firms that participate, the 180 securities firms that are active in a range of Asia bonds. So we started downstream, uh, we found the efficiencies, but we want to look at efficiencies across the fixed income vertical. So our next step is really trying to look at issuance platforms and how such a digital infrastructure partners with upstream platforms. All right, Rahan, appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks and thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.